In the earlier compression spring stress videos, I showed some common recommendations for maximum stress as a percentage of tensile limit. Under static loading conditions, a piece of ductile material will return to its original shape if stress is applied, then removed up to the point of yield. Higher stress application will cause plastic deformation and failure. In spring design, because the material is expected to transmit a force as well as conditions brought on by the forming process, relaxation and or cycle loading, the material stress limit is greatly reduced. In spring fatigue calculations, we need to start by plotting the spring design stress before performing fatigue analysis. Previously, we worked out maximum stress with the aid of the while stress correction factor which makes allowance for curvature effect and the forming process. As explained in the stress video series, WAL allows us to calculate peak stress across the wire cross section as it appears at the ID of the spring. Other stress correction factors are available, but WAL is one of the most commonly used. Stress appears across the wire cross section as a combination of shear and torsional stress. Application of stress correction makes allowance for uneven distribution and makes it possible to highlight worst case stress at the ID as shown in the example image. We need to combine the basic wire stress calculation with the correction factor to determine peak stress. We can apply this formula to find baseline stress at any given working length for the design. We need to focus on the min and max working lengths as these represent our cyclical loading unloading limits. So to determine our design stress, here are some inputs for a spring case study. The spring is stainless steel with a UTS of 1950 megapascals and a tensile limit recommendation of 45%. The OD is 12, mean diameter is 11.2, the Y diameter is 0.8 and the spring index is 14. Force at min working length will be 2.91 newtons force at max working length will be 11.63 newtons. Min and max working length stresses are to be determined at this stage. Our min working length design stress works out as 171.5 megapascals, while our maximum working length st design stress works out as 685.26 megapascals. At both working lengths, stress is below the target stress limit of 45% UTS. So for static loading applications the spring is capable, but we need to investigate fatigue life before making a similar statement. A single compression from the longest working length to the shortest and back again is considered one test cycle. During the cycle a stress waveform appears as shown, tracking the compression of the spring. Stress is positive throughout the cycle as the spring remains under load at both working lengths. Stress peaks at the maximum working length, in this case at around 685.26 megapascals. Lowest stress in the waveform occurs at the minimum working length, in this case at around 171.5 megapascals. Stress amplitude represents half of a test cycle. Shift stress represents the minimum loaded length. Stress magnitude represents stress amplitude plus shift stress. The magnitude represents the mean shift from zero stress. The mean is, predictably, the center of the waveform. If stress alternated in direction, the mean would be zero, but as previously mentioned, stress is positive at both working lengths and never crosses zero. If spring stress is below the fatigue limit, the spring will last an infinite amount of cycles. If stress is not, it will last at least a set number of cycles before failure occurs. To recap, our design stress based on our initial inputs is 171.5 megapascals at minimum length and 685 megapascals at max working length. Now we have our design stresses, we need to construct a stress to number of cycles curve or SN curve. This will help us determine how many cycles until failure will occur, if failure occurs at all. The stress limit decreases as the cycle count increases. As a general rule, 
at 1000 cycles, stress should not exceed 90% ultimate tensile strength. This is not a rule for spring design, but a general term for material fatigue life. As mentioned earlier, recommended stress for any given material used in spring construction is much less than 90% UTS. At 1 million cycles, stress should not exceed 45% ultimate tensile strength. I've taken this from the material stress recommendation earlier in this video. 45% can be replaced with a lesser figure if the recommended material stress is lower. You may be thinking the design stress is already calculated as below 45%, but the two UTS percentage figures are just placeholders at this stage, and there is much more to fatigue life than the basic stress calculation so we need to continue down this route. We need to calculate maximum peak stress. If it is below 45% tensile limit, the spring will cycle infinitely without failure occurring. If stress is above 45%, it will last a number of cycles until failure occurs. So our spring will either live in the infinite life zone but if above 45%, our spring will experience finite life and therefore failure will occur. The question then becomes, after how many cycles does this happen? So to construct our curve, we need a reference stress at both 1000 and 1 million cycles. We can estimate 90% stress at 1755 megapascals. 45% stress is 877.5 megapascals. We could apply factors to allow for surface finish and treatments to reduce both figures further, but for simplicity I'm assuming no further detrimental effects. Mean stress is a sum of the minimum plus max design stress over 2, which calculates at 428.38 megapascals. Stress amplitude is a sum of the max minus min design stress over 2, which gives us 256.88 megapascals. Shift stress is the minimum stress observed at the longest working length. As stress is not alternating, we need to make allowance for positive stress occurring throughout the cycle. So the max stress for 1000 cycles is calculated as follows. Stress at 90% times 1 minus stress amplitude plus shift stress over UTS, which gives us a reference stress of 1369.458 megapascals. Stress for 1 million cycles is worked out similarly. At 45% times 1 minus stress amplitude plus shift stress over UTS, this gives us a reference stress of 684.729 megapascals. We can now begin to fill in the SN curve with data. Max reference stresses at 1000 and 1 million cycles can be used to construct a formula for calculating cycles or stress to failure. The equation A times a predicted number of cycles to failure to the power of B can be used to work out the reference stress for failure. We can work out variable A using reference max stresses worked out earlier. A equals S max 10 to the 3 to the power of 6 over S max 10 to the 6 to the power of 3. And A in this instance works out at 2738.916. A is unitless and is a constant, used only to work out stress cycles to failure. We can also work out a variable B using reference max stresses worked out earlier. B equals 1 over 6 minus 3 times log S max 10 to the 3 over S max 10 to the 6. B is a constant, it is also a measurement of the slope as cycles increase, and it must be negative. We now have the inputs to complete the equation. 
Next, we could input a number of cycles to check the failure stress. We could even put a million cycles in to check the minimum stress for infinite life. We can replace the SN curve percentages with our reference stresses. In essence, this gives us the stress for infinite life, but we want to check our design stress. We can arrange the reference stress equation to work out cycles to failure. The equation becomes n equals square root to the power of b a over reference stress. Our design stress was 685.26 megapascals at working length S2. Plugging in the stress, the number of cycles to failure is 992,304 cycles. Applying the design stress to the SN curve, we can see stress is in the finite zone, meaning the design will not last a million cycles and therefore will eventually fail. At a life of 992,304 cycles, there are options to consider. If the spring is required to last less than 992,304,000 ,000 cycles, there is no need to change materials. However, if the spring is to last an infinite number of cycles, then the wire design stress should not exceed 607.5 megapascals. The predicted design cycle life count is so close to the infinite life target that the sourcing of a similar material offering a slightly higher UTS or UTS percentage recommendation should address the deficit.